morning friends and family. This morning, ask a question. I'd like for you to ask yourself this question as we move through the Word of God in this sermon. What will you do with Jesus? What are you doing with Jesus? Acts chapter 15, verse 8. And God who knows your heart testified to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as He has given it to us. <clears throat> How's that important to us? Most of us are from the Gentile race. We're not Jews. You're one or the other. But Jews and Gentiles alike are all given the same opportunity to turn to God. Acts 15, 19. He gave us free will all the way back in the Garden of Eden. We can choose good. We can choose evil. We can choose to follow Christ. We can choose not to follow Christ. It's up to us. And He knows the good and the bad in His heart. We know. I've heard so many times people, He just don't know any better. We all know the difference between good and evil. That happened in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. And it will always be through us, even our children and heirs. We know, we know good from evil. <clears throat> what am I doing with Jesus? What are you doing with Jesus? Am I ignoring His claims? Does this thing really mean anything to me? Do I care about what it says, what it doesn't say? His commands, His doctrine, do I really care? Am I ignoring it? One who does not believe is condemned already. You're saying, preacher, that if I don't believe in Jesus, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just telling you that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're condemned already. When one does not believe, he adds to the sin that he already has in his life. It's the sin of unbelief. You don't believe in Jesus Christ? Really? Matthew 10, 32, 32 says, Therefore, whoever confesses me, that Jesus before men, and we do, don't we? Him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. He will be confessing to us, Father, this is Joe, Jim, John. All these beautiful names in here, especially John, I like that. Matthew 10.33 But whoever denies me before men, I don't believe in Jesus. Him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Depart from me, I never knew you. That will be the worst words anyone will ever hear in all of eternity. So if I have faith in Christ Jesus, what am I doing with Him? Well, I believe in Jesus. Well, what are you doing about it? There are serious questions which everyone must face in each individual life. The decisions about Christ. Do I... Do I deny Christ? Am I one that's in the middle ground just sort of flirting with the idea of really being a follower of Christ or being a Christian? Are you a Christian? Yeah. Or am I 100% committed? Am I trying to do what Christ teaches me to do in that New Testament? John 8, 24 says, Unless one believes, you can't believe in Jesus and deny Him, that Jesus is He. He is God. He will die in His sins. You don't believe in Jesus, you will die in your sins? Isn't that just a little bit tough, preacher? Well, preacher didn't write the book. It's in the book. Am I holding to the world? What is more important to me in my life than worshiping God, getting to heaven, and getting everybody I come in contact with to heaven with me? What's more important than that? A football game? Uh, making money? Uh, what I'm going to eat? I know you're looking at me about that. But here's the deal. Nothing needs to be more important than that, does it? Matthew 16, 26 through 27. Here's some questions before I read those verses. What will such conduct profit me if I am holding to the world or I'm holding to Christ? Uh, is there anything I put before Christ? No, really? Think about that. Well, maybe one little thing. I don't want to be held out of heaven with one little thing, do you? A serious question that deserves a serious answer. What will I do with Jesus? Let me read 16, verse 26 and 27 of Matthew. For what profit is it to a man 
He begins the whole world. Richest guy there is. And loses his own soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? <clears throat> Anybody right now that is in the flames of Hades would give everything on earth, every minute of his life, every penny he ever had, any possession he ever owned, any talent, any hobby, any sport, any victory, he'd give it all away if he could come back and have another chance. I don't want to be guilty of that. But the Son of Man will come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He will reward each according to the works. If man and woman had the two-second rule, the world would be the most beautiful, wonderful, loving place that you could ever be. It would be like heaven. What's the two-second rule? If somebody took your face into a bowl of acid and stuck your face into that bowl of acid, for one second and brought you out, you would, you would pray to God that no one could ever do that again, wouldn't you? Because you'd be deformed forever. If you could spend one second in hell, which makes the acid look like nothing, you would never want to go there, would you? If you could spend one second of your life remembering the time that you held your first baby, if you could remember the first time that you met the person you had been in love with all of your life, all those beautiful, beautiful memories that we have, and compare that to going to heaven for just one sake, just give me a glimpse of it, God, just a glimpse, we'd never have a problem in it. What will I do with Jesus, would we? Oh, He'd be at the center of our attention. What will I do with Jesus? Some questions, some examples. Am I like Felix? Felix understood about life. He was really contemplating doing the right thing. And he knew, like a lot of people here uh, today, especially in this old world, yeah, I hear the gospel, and I know I probably need to obey the gospel. Maybe I need to change what I've been taught because the Bible don't go along with it. I need to go along with God's Word. I need, I need to follow Christ. I need to be baptized into the body of Christ if I have it. I need to walk in the light, change anything in my life to help me get to heaven. And nothing's going to stop me. Well, Felix didn't do that. He said, you know what? Let me wait for a more convenient time uh, to know Jesus, okay? Uh, I'm just not ready yet. It's, it's not a good time in my life to be able to do this. Now, as I get a little older and I get these things behind me, then I may turn attention to Jesus. I don't want to be Felix, do you? There's not ever going to be a more convenient time in your life than this second that God's given you. I promise you that. And I want to get beyond me, myself, and I just for a minute. Am I concerned about my children, my grandchildren, some of us great-grandchildren, maybe some of you old folks out there? You have great-great-grandchildren. Are you, are you concerned about their souls? I know you are. Are you concerned about the person sitting beside you, behind you, and in front of you? I know you are. There's no more convenient time than right now. And I don't mean at the end of the sermon, I mean right now. Somebody, I had this discussion with someone this week. Do we have to wait until the sermon's over to respond? Find that verse somewhere. You can repent at any second of your life. If you need to come forward, please interrupt this sermon. You know, who cares? We have got to worry about our souls and those around us. We need to be the most beautiful example to those we love. The other thing I've noticed about so many people and myself so many times in my life, I was one of those that I flirted with religion a little bit, but I never got 100% committed. 
Do I have to get 100% committed? Well, did anybody ever get 100% committed to me? I think when they hung Jesus on the cross, I believe they called, He gave me 100% with you. Uh, it's not hard for me to give somebody 100% when He's done that for me. Will I reject Him for worldly honor like Pilate in chapter 18 and 19 of John? You know, Pilate had the power and opportunity to bring Christ in his life. He could have done it. But he rejected it. Maybe it was for fame. Maybe it was for honor. Maybe pride. Maybe he just, he just wanted to please man and have everybody like him. What difference does it make? He just did it. He rejected Christ. Am I going to be like Judas and sell him for money? Is money that important to me that I give up Christ in my life? I hope not. Crucify Him as did the mob because they were servants of Satan. What do you mean by that, preacher? Christ was not saying He wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And I might not be saying what you want to hear this morning. I hope pray I am. But I don't have a choice. This is the truth. I didn't write it. The Holy Spirit did as you moved through man. And I had to speak the truth. Well, I don't appreciate what you're saying. Well, I'm not saying it. I'm repeating it. We have to listen to God's Word. We really do. You know why? I won't judge you in the end. There's not a man or woman you know in your life that will judge you in the end. The Word of God will judge you in the end. It's the truth. John 12, 48. Now, if we could get old Pilate and Judas and that mob back out of Hades now where they're burning in flames, can you imagine the beautiful, beautiful response they'd have? I wouldn't get to the invitation. They'd be sitting on the front bench. In fact, they'd move me over and they'd be preaching a sermon better than I could ever even think about preaching. They've tasted it. They've had their one second, which will last forever. Woo! 1 Peter 1, verse 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, you love. We love Jesus Christ. Though now you do not see Him, yet believing, and <clears throat> the church at Ware Branch this is to you, because I know you do. Though you do not see Him now, yet you believe with all your heart and rejoice with joy inexpressible. Can't even explain how much joy you have. And you're just full of glory, receiving the end of your faith at the end of all your belief and work through your life, the salvation of your souls, your souls being saved, raised up into the clouds, heading off into the sunset with Jesus Himself forever. So many today still want proof. You do something for me, you make me rich, I might believe in you. You, uh, you build me a new house, I might believe in you. Well, He ain't going to build you a new house, but He did build the sun, the moon, the stars, the sky, the oxygen you breathe, the water you drink, the cells in your body, the DNA you've got. You know, we read all kind of books and all kind of things and all kind of theories that have tried to disprove the Bible. And they keep failing. The harder they try, the more they substantiate the truth of this book in history. You know, you would think after a while somebody would take the science book and throw it out the window and pick the Bible up and say, hey, I'm your new science teacher. We're going to talk about God's Word today. That's what we're going to talk about. We're not talking about how to kill babies. We're not going to sit here and talk about how to be immoral uh, because science says so. We're going to talk about God made man and woman. Don't you wish that's what's being taught today and that's all I know I do. How about all the miracles that are recorded? Recorded. All the witnesses that saw His resurrection. Are we just saying all those people are liars? We're talking about thousands and thousands of people. Witness these, these miracles. Thousands. 
We believe one person a day, they change the world. One person can cause all kind of destruction in the world today. But we refuse to read and believe thousands of witnesses of Christ. Will I be like the jailer? I hope so. Render prompt obedience. Acts 16.33 says, And he took them to the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. This jailer goes in and washed the stripes of these, these beautiful people that were imprisoned. Paul Silas. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. This Roman jailer knew that if he was caught doing what he was doing, that he, he could be having 39 stripes that usually kill people. He could even be crucified. The slowest, most cruel death of the time. But he didn't care. But what about his family? Did he not love his family? Well, that could happen to them too just to teach him a lesson. He saw the importance and the significance of them being baptized into the body of Christ because if they got killed, it would hurt for a little while. But to go to hell is not a little while. It's forever. Like Paul who counted things as lost to win Christ. You remember Paul? Paul was a ranked Roman soldier. He had about everything he'd ever want. He had power. He had prestige. He had money. He had it all. And what does it say? But what things were gained to me? Nothing. These I have counted lost. Why? Because I want to fall to Christ. Paul, 100% committed. Am I 100% committed? Is that what I feel like when I say, what will I do with Jesus? Am I all in or partially in? Mostly in or all in? The greatest demonstration of the love and grace of God is the crucifixion of Jesus. Romans 5 8 blows my mind. To see Jesus give his life for some of you precious saints out there, it's still hard to grasp, but he did. But for Jesus Christ to give his life for some of the worst, sinful, rotten people on earth because he loved them, can you grasp love like that? It's hard for me to. But Jesus loves us all. <clears throat> he loves us so much that the Father in Heaven, the Father in Heaven turned His head from Him. Hmm. Mark 15, 34, And in the ninth hour, Jesus on the cross cried out in a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani being interpreted as, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you in my time of need? Can you imagine being the Father of Jesus Christ and seeing your Son most holy, perfect, going through all that? He did God have the power to stop it? God could have destroyed the whole world in an instant. But He loved me and you so much. He had to forsake his own son in time of need. Man, what love that is, isn't it? At the cross, man has seen it his worst. And God's grace is at its best. We need to grasp and understand the love of God. At the cross, man's crime is seen. It's awful. And yet what toppled that was the compassion of God. At the cross, man's ruin is seen. But we were paid for that day by the blood of Christ. God's redemption is seen. You know, today so many people have a hardened heart. But God's love and desire that they will all come to repentance and be saved. No matter how bad, how rotten, how terrible I get. God is always the rooting section saying, come on, son, you can do it. Be strong. Come on, babe. You can do it. And so many times, we hear His Word saying that and we still turn our face from Him. Won't accept it. In 1 Peter 3.18, man in his wisdom 
says that it is not right to kill the innocent, even though we kill a million babies a year. But no innocent man should suffer for the guilty. Let me ask you this. The death of Christ, evidently God made an exception to this because He loves us so much. The innocent paid the price for my guilt. 1 Corinthians 1.25, because of the foolishness of God is wiser than I could ever be. So I can't really understand this. But God can. How could God do all this for me? I'm so unworthy. We're grateful that the just Jesus suffered for the unjust, we being the unjust, Him being the just. In the eyes of God, it is the only way our sins are forgiven is through Jesus. Romans 5, 9, much more than having now been justified by the blood of Christ, we shall be saved from the wrath of God Himself. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. With all the power that God has got, can you imagine me being guilty of spitting in the face of His own Son all my life? Turning Him down. Mocking Him. On Judgment Day, I'm facing His Father. Woo! <clears throat> what will I do with Jesus? It's a demonstration of God's love for us. 1 John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes it's to Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Boy, that needs to be, mean a whole lot to me and you both. By this we know love because He laid down His life for me and you, as we all lay down our lives for our brethren. Would I lay down my life for a brethren? I hope and pray I'm that strong. Jesus was, for all of us, the worst of the worst. Would I lay my life down for a brother or sister that I claim to love? I hope I would. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 says, In this the love of God was manifested or shown towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And that's what we want to do. The cross of Jesus divides the world like it divided the thieves. Listen to this. The first part of this side, I'm describing my brothers and sisters here at Ware Branch. The saved side. On one side was the thief who said, Lord, remember me. He believed in Jesus. When you come into your kingdom. Luke 23, 42. Remember me, Lord. I'll be somewhere listing for my name when the Lord comes again. I want to hear it. I want to be with you guys. And I don't want to be with so many people we read of in the Bible that are in a bad place. The condemned side where this other thief went. On the other side was the thief that railed on him. If you're the Christ, save yourself as well as us. In other words, if you do that, I might believe in you. Mm. This man is now in torment. As we speak, I said one second, he's still there the whole time I've been speaking. And when we get through and go eat and come back and meet again, he's still there. Tonight when we go to bed, he's still there. It'll never cease. He don't get a break. I don't want to go there. I do not want to go there. We're with a thief on the correct side. And he went to paradise in Hades. As we will one day, the Lord will deliver us to His Father. 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Can you imagine us being raised into the clouds? Our Savior saying, Father, here they are. The church. Woo! What a beautiful, beautiful sight. What will I do with Jesus? Why should I claim Him? The reason we should claim Jesus is listen closely. I've got to go through it. He will always give you forgiveness if you do the right thing. You have obeyed the Gospel and you repent. Colossians 2.13 He is the only way we can be saved. 2 Timothy 2.10 
He is the way that we can get to God and I cannot get to the Father any other way. John 14, 6. He's the way to peace. You want to have peace in your life? Romans 5, 1. It's through Jesus. And there's the most important one of all. He's your way out of hell. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. What will I do with Jesus? Pay Him with respect. Pay Him with honor. Pay Him with love. And I'm going to do what He says. I'm going to study what You tell me to do, Lord. And I'm going to do everything in my life to do it for the rest of my days. Eternal salvation depends together on the way we answer this question. What will I do with Jesus? We'll read 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life. And this life is in His Son. And He who has the Son has life. And he does not have the Son, does not have life. This is a simple question. What would hold me back or anyone else from doing whatever I need to do in my life this very second to make myself right with God? I don't know. You know, if all these Scriptures can't make me respond, then as a preacher, there's nothing I can do to make anyone respond. What we do with Jesus this very second in our lives settles what He will do with us later. Hmm. At this present time, the question is simple. What will I do with Jesus? Revelation 20.15 And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I want to get down to the J's and by J-O-H-N. I want to be written in the book of life. We can say that and be funny, but can you imagine on Judgment Day, he's going through all these people and he skips my name? No! You forgot me! John, depart from me, son. I never knew you. What will I do with Jesus? <coughs> One day, what will Jesus do with me? That's the scary part. The desire of each one of us should be to have a closer walk with my friend Jesus. <clears throat> Come walk with me. Listen to this. Revelation 3, 19 through 21. He says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Lord, could I ask you who you're telling this to? John, this is through you to everyone in the building and it is to you too, son. Therefore, be zealous, be excited and repent, John. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I dine with him and he with me to him who overcomes. Are you going to overcome? I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Jesus, you're saying that you will grant us to sit at the right hand of God the Father? As I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne? What a beautiful opportunity we're given today in this life for each one of us. You talk about friends and family day. How would you like to make sure when you walk out that door today that yeah, you visited family and friends and we're honored by your presence, each one of us? We love each other. But to walk out of here knowing that you're right in God's sight. Woo! Matthew 16, 24. Whoever wishes to come after me, first thing you've got to do is deny yourself. It's not what you want, it's what God wants. Take up His cross and follow me. Jesus is not only looking for us to believe in Him and obey His Word. He's looking for those that will give 100% commitment to Jesus. That's what we want. That's what He wants. And He can demand it because He gave 100% for us on that cross. 100%. He didn't flirt with it. He gave it all. He didn't almost come to death. He didn't nearly suffer. He did it all because He loves us. Why is it so wrong for Him to ask the same thing of us? I'll read these verses in the Sermon of Bill. 1 John 1, 6-9. If we say we have fellowship with Christ and walk in sin, we lie 
and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, then cleanses us from all sin. We're going to walk as Christians in the light of His Word. If we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins every time and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we can walk out that door, hold our little chest up, our little chin high, and say, I am a true child of God, and I'm faithful to Him. If you have not obeyed the Gospel and been baptized into the body of Christ for the remission, the removal of your sins, and been added to the church by the Lord Himself, Acts 2, 47, then you might consider doing that now as we stand and as we sing. Oh, dude.